Fornication. First lesson, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians 10, 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day 23,000. Golden Text, Revelations 2, 20 through 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her unto a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with the death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. If any person comes into brotherhood and continues to have problems, I do not sympathize with him, because he is the architect of his own fate. You have been told not to fornicate because when you fornicate, you are dead, but you continue to indulge in fornication. It is what is palatable to the sick man that he will finally eat and die. The word of God says that if we were to search ourselves, God would not judge us. But when he judges us, he chastises us so that he may not condemn us with the world. This will prove to the whole world that there is neither witchcraft, nor mermaid, nor concoction, nor hatreds. It is fornication that constitutes your problem. Any sickness that has no names has no cure. But when you know the name of a sickness, you can find a cure for it. The whole world has been blind and deaf. They do not know that it is fornication which they regard as tea, which has brought upon them tribulations that is in the world. Right from the scientists, engineers and professors, and other important men of this world who claim to be heaven and earth, do fornicate, but none of them know that it is this fornication that brings death and destruction to the whole world. If somebody tells you that there is another means through which the problems of man emanate, it is not true. The main source of all the problems of man is fornication. God created man as his dwelling place and breathed his spirit into him. The Holy Spirit does not live in any other place. He lives in us. You argue that God lives in the sky or in the water or under the earth. He does not live in any of these places. He lives in our hearts. He lives in each of us. You say that you want to build a church. You want to build a cathedral or you want to build a synagogue. You want to build a temple. I say, do not build anything because you are his temple. You are his synagogue and cathedral. God has informed us through his prophets that the Most High does not dwell in houses built by human hands that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. What kind of house will you build for God? What kind of dwelling place can you provide for him? Did not his hands make all these things? Your head is the throne of God. Your feet and arms are his footstool. Your head is God's head. And that is why whoever points an accusing finger at your head has met his doom. Even though you do not know this, but he knows it that your head, though small, is the ruler of all your body. You argue that man is not God, but God says that you are his temple and that he dwells within you. You are not your own and no person owns you. It is he who has built his house and dwelt in it. That is why, if you defile that house through fornication or by any other means, he will destroy you. All those who come to brotherhood and continue indulging in fornication, are doing themselves more harm than good. They do not love themselves. If there is any fornicator who says he has peace, let him come out. Till doomsday, he has no peace. In times past, you did not know that God is living in you. But when you came here, you had been told that the Holy Spirit lives in you and that whoever defiles the dwelling place of God, him will God destroy. 
That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said that the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to obtain this world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marries nor are they given in marriage. Because they are the children of the resurrection and are equal to the angels, this is that world, and the Father has come down. That accounts for death and sicknesses, afflicting people because you are defiling his temple through fornication. You suffer like a murderer and like a wretch. God loves us. That is why Christ promised that when he will send the comforter, he, the comforter, will lead us to the accurate wisdom of the truth. That is why I am giving this warning to the world through the television. As for you who have already heard it, and yet you continue to fornicate, you will continue to suffer daily. There is no sin as hideous as fornication. God lives in you. You are the temple of God and you are not on your own. Yet you become heady and stubborn and go on fornicating. You have yourself to blame. No angel can kill you. You cannot kill yourself. No person can kill you. The water cannot kill you. But it is God who destroys you when you commit fornication and defile the temple of God. Death has no power over you. Hades has no power over you. Sickness has no power over you. There is nothing that has dominion over you. But the moment you commit fornication, God destroys you and he casts your soul into fire. If we were to fear him, we would not fornicate or defile our body in any other way. If we should maintain our purity, we would not have any problems. You claim that you are being bewitched and that mermaid and juju are troubling you. And I ask, where are they? There is no other thing. Any person who keeps his temple holy and pure for God to dwell in has no problems whatsoever. The only thing we have to pursue in this kingdom is chastity and celibacy. When you preach and give visions, are you pure? Are you sure that you do not fornicate? You boast that you want to build a church for God and I ask, where is the church? You are the church, so build yourself. Have self-control. Do not fornicate. Do not commit adultery. Keep yourself pure. When you build magnificent cathedrals, you are only displaying your wealth in earthly things. It has nothing to do with God, especially when you defile your body. God lives in your heart. He lives in your body. The time when you can deceive another has passed. You heard that when the disciples showed him the temple and its beauty, he told them that not one stone will be left on top of another because they all would be raised to the ground. He further said, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. He was referring to his body. That is why he came and shed his blood so that he may purify us unto himself because we are his dwelling place. We depart from him when we defile his temple, but we are his when we maintain our purity and sanctity. You confess that you have forsaken drinking wine, telling lies, anger, and hatred, but that you are only left with fornication. You are to be pitied indeed. You claim that you have built a temple for God, that you pay tithe, and that you give alms to the poor, that you give to the necessities of the needy. But that one thing still left with you is fornication. You are to be pitied indeed. This is not the time for God to dwell in a house, as our Lord Jesus Christ has said that foxes have holes, birds have their nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Today, the Son of Man has a place to lay his head. He lives in you, and so you have to keep his dwelling place holy, otherwise he will demolish you. He has been vested with power over all flesh. He has bought us with his blood, and that is why he says those mine enemies, which would not that I rule over them. Bring them here and slay them before me. Do not bother yourself in preparing an altar, burning incense, and reading the six and seven books of Moses. You are the temple of God, and he lives in you. You sit with him and you walk with him. He lives in you and you live in him. You sit with him and you walk with him. He lives in you and you live with him. That is why we do not worship any building. You argue that we stay in the house of God and eat bananas and rice. I tell you that you cannot stay in the house of God. God is living in you. I advise you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and in the night that you should not commit fornication. Abstain from fornication. Forsake fornication, you brotherhood, men and women, because whoever commits fornication is worthy of death. If you had not achieved anything since you got baptized into brotherhood, do not commit fornication or adultery. 
Every other sin which a man commits does not enter into his body, but the sin of fornication gets into the body and destroys you. Christ has said that foxes have holes and birds have their nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Such a statement cannot be repeated. The Son of Man has now got a dwelling place. Do you now see why it is said that this is the luckiest generation? This was not known by the people of Israel, and so they regarded their bodies as theirs, and that they were free to do whatever they pleased with themselves. They told lies, they fornicated, they committed adultery, and they did whatever they liked. Now you should know that you have to maintain your purity and sanctity because you are the dwelling place of God. Your body can be compared to an egg, and so you have to handle it delicately. Do not be so angry. Do not tell lies. Do not incise anything into your body. Do not drink. Do not fornicate. Do not indulge in these vices because you are the dwelling place of God. God lives in you. You are his house. Brethren, if you keep yourself pure, when you sit, the Father will be speaking to you and you will be conversing with him. All good things will come to you. Your eyes will be opened. There is no point of hoping for heaven because you are already in heaven. If you remain here for 10 years and yet you continue to fornicate, your 10 years means nothing. Or you confess that you have been here for 20 years, but you continue to indulge in fornication on a small level. Your 20 years will not yield any dividends. All those who love God and are loved by God do not fornicate and they are saved. It is said that you cannot enter into this kingdom with wealth, but only with faith. God is no respecter of persons, neither does he take bribes. The moment you commit fornication, no matter whether you are deep in the ocean, God has seen you and you will realize the consequences right there. It could be through committing fornication that a thief gets into your house and steals everything of yours. It could be as a result of fornication, you lose your child. You could lose your job because of fornication. It could be because of fornication that somebody borrows money from you and fails to return the money to you. All these are signals of warning. When you realize that things are changing around you, search yourself because you have committed fornication. At whatever time that evil starts besetting you, search yourself because you have committed fornication or you have committed adultery. When you complain that whatever you invest in does not prosper, have you searched yourself that you have not committed fornication? This fact is hidden from all church denominations. It is hidden from all secret societies. It is hidden from the necromancers. It is hidden from the kings and temporal rulers. It is hidden from all schools and institutions. It is hidden from the whole world. Many people argue that God created the world for man and man for the woman. That is not true. You and the woman are brother and sister. He created both of you unto himself. He built the house for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. It is just like the house that you build for yourself. That is how God has created you so that he may dwell in you. He did not build you for any other thing. If you defile the house, there is no other option for you except for you to be destroyed. Before he destroys you, he has to visit you with sickness and poverty. If you are stubborn and you still persist in it, the house becomes useless. All the punishment that we receive is the result of fornication. It is nothing other than the punishment of God because of fornication. Before the civil war, God sent a prophetess from Sierra Leone to warn the people of Nigeria that the impending bloodshed was as a result of fornication. Who listened to her? All the sickness and lack which confront you are the outcome of fornication. He has come to dwell in his house and finds it defiled. He has to destroy it. You heard that 23,000 persons died in one day because of fornication. That is a small matter compared to what is happening at this end of time. Millions of people are dying every day because of fornication. He has come to dwell in his house and he has found it defiled. And so he has to destroy it. When you are told that 23,000 people died in one day because of fornication, you should realize that our Lord Jesus Christ had not yet shed his blood to wash men from their sins. But now that he has used his blood to wash us unto himself, you have to expect the number to increase in geometrical progression. Those who do not know about this will receive a lighter punishment. But you who have been here in brotherhood, you are a Christ servant or a Christ student, a Christ practical student and an elder. 
You are a pastor and a deaconess. You are a chorister and a prophet, but you commit fornication. What do you think about yourself? It means that you do not love your life. When you hear that a brotherhood member has died or has suffered from any affliction, you should know that he has committed fornication. When you will hear that a man is wretched or that he has been in prison or that he is sick, it is nothing else he has committed other than fornication. When the people of the world are beset with problems because of fornication, they attribute it to witchcraft or juju. It is none of these things, but because they have committed fornication. It is said that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Brethren, I do not intend to labor you. Today's lesson is on fornication. Let our first lesson be read. First lesson, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Brethren, have you heard that? Many of the pastors here, when they did not come to brotherhood, they had no wife, but now they have up to five. They are harming themselves, not me. The same with many of you. You will claim that this does not concern you. I have told the truth. Your blood is upon you. Whoever perishes, his blood will be upon him, because I have declared to the whole world openly that fornication brings death. Whatever falls under the generic name, whether a child or a man or a woman, he has been bought with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is the temple and the dwelling place of God. That is why he said that it is expedient that I go away, because if I do not go, the Comforter will not come. If he did not shed his blood to wash away our sins, God would not be able to come and live in us. Where then would he dwell? It is said that when the battle is tough, the king leads the army. That is why he said, if I go not away, the father will not come. If I go, the father will come unto you. This spiritual war is tough. If you go to the hospital, you will see the number of people struck with sickness and death. The accidents and deaths are the effect of the spiritual war going on because of fornication. Think of the civil war in Nigeria and the number of corpses that lay on the roads. Could you number them? It was for the reason of fornication and no other thing. When you find people researching into the cases of so many diseases in the world, I am telling you that it is for no other reason than fornication. There is no person who will use his blood to wash his house to make it fit for habitation and comes to find it defiled and polluted and would agree with the situation, you would not. Now that you are using gold and marble to build houses for God, you are deceiving yourself. You are not deceiving God because you are the dwelling place of God. Whether you go to church or not is immaterial. The important thing is that you refrain from fornication so that there may be peace. People have ears but cannot hear. They have heads but cannot reason. Did our Lord not tell the Samaritan woman the same thing? The woman told him that their fathers worshipped on this mountain, but the Jews said that it is in Jerusalem that people ought to worship. Jesus answered and said, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when we shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship what they do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The question is, where does this spirit dwell? He is in you, and you dwell in him. That is why when you see man, you have seen God. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ says, I and my Father are one. All those who have kept their purity and sanctity and have the Father living in them, they are one with the Father. They are the Christ, and they are spirit. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, If you are told he is in the desert, do not go. If you are told that he is in the desert, do not go. If you are told that he is in the secret chambers, do not go. For as the lightning shines from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. How do you want me to explain this topic to you? You have eyes, but you cannot see. You have ears, but you cannot hear. Is it that you were destined for perdition? You remember that when Joseph was sold to Potiphar, the wife of Potiphar wanted Joseph to have carnal love affairs with him. Joseph asked her, 
Why do you want me to offend my God by committing this great evil in his sight? The woman did not ask him for money. The wife of his master was begging him for an affair with her by fornication. But Joseph resisted because of the fear of God in him. If you commit fornication, you have not offended somebody's husband or somebody's wife. You have offended God. You have reached your wit's end. If you like to hide with a woman behind the walls, you are deceiving yourself because I know that I told you the truth and you will receive the punishment commensurate with your sin. In a very short time, you will not be able to see the Father whenever you please. Have you refrained from sin? If you do not refrain from sin, I have nothing to do with you. There is sin unto death. There is sin unto forgiveness. Those things which you did not know are sinful. When you commit them and ask God for forgiveness, he forgives you. But when you have known that it is sin to fornicate and commit adultery, to steal and tell lies and get drunk, but you deliberately commit these sins, you will die. I cannot pray for you. There is no use praying for you because you must perish. That is why the word of God says that servants who knew not his Lord's will shall receive light beatings. But he that knew his father's will, but did not act according to it, shall receive heavier beatings. I have told you in many books are published to this effect, that you should refrain from sin. You should not fornicate or commit adultery. You should not commit abortion. You should not indulge in the preparation of concoctions. Never indulge in any of these things because it is death. But you continue to indulge in them. Your body is upon you. Let our second lesson be read. Listen attentively, you who desire life. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians 10, 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day 23,000. Have you heard that? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. What is read unto you happened in the time of Moses. At that time, Elijah did not come, and our Lord Jesus Christ did not come. Why were Adam and Eve driven out of the Garden of Eden? It was for the sin of fornication. They were with God, and God used to converse with them. There was no sickness, nor lack, nor scorching heat, nor hunger. Right from the day that they committed fornication, death, sickness, and hunger afflicted them until this day. God swore that he would never live in a defiled house. That is why from time to time people use rods, staff, and handkerchief to call in angels. But as for God, he cannot come to the defiled house. You can see how God has revealed everything to you in this end of time. He says, Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and 23,000 fell in one day. These things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the end of the world has come. If you are a black man and you fornicate, you have to die. If you are a white man and you fornicate, you will equally die. Whatever you are, if you fornicate, you have to die. If you are an old man and you fornicate, you die there. If you are a little child and you commit fornication, you die there. If you are a bishop or an archbishop, no matter what you may be, if you fornicate, you have to die. If you are a millionaire or a billionaire, if you fornicate, you cannot escape death. The only remedy is to refrain from it. The moment you indulge in it, brother, you are not free. God spends this year to open your eyes and ears and foster your understanding. The foolishness should stop that far. The moment you forsake fornication, you have overcome death. You have overcome Hades. You have overcome the grave. A lot of people ask why some members of brotherhood continue to die and become sick. Why should they not die when they have committed fornication? The moment they commit fornication, they are dead. God is no respecter of persons. If you come to brotherhood and continue to fornicate, you must die or you stay away from brotherhood and continue to fornicate, you must die. You remain inside the water and commit fornication, you must die. You remain inside the water and commit fornication, you must die. The only remedy is that we should not commit fornication as they did and 23,000 fell in one day. You say that you do not want to be a prophetess. You do not want to be a deaconess. You want to remain among the choristers and congregation so that you have fun first. If you commit fornication, you are dying. You say that you do not want to be a Christ student because they are not permitted to marry. If you are not a Christ student and you continue to fornicate, you will die. No matter what you are, you have been bought with a great price 
You are the building of God. God does not live in any other place. You have to keep his temple pure. This is a spiritual warfare and the Holy Spirit has come to assume dominion over our bodies and live with us forever. Whatever building God does not dwell, that building is empty and must be demolished. Brethren, why is it that after God has shed his blood and washed us clean, he comes again to find the house defiled? Where do you want him to live? Why is it that your hearts are hardened and your ears blocked so that you continue to indulge in this sin and are visited with all these punishments? It is said that though hand be joined to hand in prayer, the wicked will not escape death. That is why he cried on the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If God did not forsake him, there was no person who could do anything to him. No person would even go near him. And if he had not drunk the cup, no person would have touched him. Nothing would have happened to him. God has said that unless a spotless blood is shed, he can never come again to live in man. It is for this reason that he used his spotless blood to wash away our Adamic cross so that we may be a pure and fitting dwelling place for God. Why is it that today you have gone out of your way to defile that building again? Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ has done what no man has ever done because if he did not shed his blood to wash the sins of the world, the Holy Spirit would not come. But now that he has come, why is it that you continue to fornicate and commit adultery? It is a pitiful situation to see that all the church denominations, the pastors, reverends, and those who call themselves founders of churches cannot realize this. And their eyes are not open to the fact that their indulgence in fornication is the source of all their problems. Brethren, do not commit fornication as the Israelites did and died in one day, 23,000. This proves that any person who commits fornication must die. God has no other building. You are his building. And that is why it is said that whoever destroys his building, him will God destroy. That is why it is also said that whoever has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. What we have to do is to surrender ourselves to God by forsaking fornication, falsehood, drinking and every sin which defiles man so that he can dwell in us. Heaven helps those who help themselves. We help ourselves when we refrain from fornication, whether with our eyes or through any other way. We also refrain from telling lies and stealing. When we do these, it means that we are helping ourselves and we have saved ourselves. It is foolishness for one to argue that until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again and changes him, because he was the one who died for him, is it not our Lord Jesus Christ who is now speaking these words? Every day he continues to tell you not to commit fornication as the Israelites did and died in the wilderness. The Lord Jesus Christ speaks to you, but you argue and procrastinate until he comes again. Are you insane? Have you not seen the deaconess who went to India? They all have one mind. Very many women here have forsaken fornication. But the men argue that certain women love them very much, and so they continue to indulge in fornication. It is a very simple thing. He is knocking at the door, open for him. If you forsake fornication, that is all. The Holy Spirit will come and dwell in his house, and you will have no problems again. There will be no sickness or lack. The Holy Spirit does everything for you. When you were alone without the Holy Spirit, you could not differentiate left and right, and you were suffering. I know that when the worldly people hear this gospel, they would not be happy with it, especially when they remember their girlfriends and boyfriends. God chastises whom he loves and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If God did not love the world, he would not have given this gospel to them. The judges, millionaires, professors, doctors, and all top people of the society think that they are free to live the way they please. This is not true. Who are you to behave the way you like? If you fornicate, you die. You must become sick and wretched. All sorts of problems will find their way to you. When you have money, or you are at the head of a village, or when you are a governor, or at the head of a church where everybody is under you, you think you have the choice of all men and women. You thank God for the wonderful occasions which enable you continue to change women as clothing. That is death itself. You are heading for death. Remember that you have a father and he is no respecter of persons. 
a word is sufficient unto the wise. I will not be tedious with you. Let our golden text be read. Listen attentively so that you may hear this injunction. Golden text, Revelations 2, 20 through 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her unto a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. You have seen how I have made it four verses, so that you can see clearly what the Holy Spirit is about to do. They are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says that he has a few things against you, because you have suffered that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. If she does not repent, I will cast her unto a sick bed and they that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. You can now see why you are suffering. Many of you have been retrenched from work. Some have no jobs. You have nothing to do and you are suffering. It is because of fornication. Again, he says, if you do not repent, I will cast you into a sick bed. Have you not seen that all the sickness in the world come as a result of fornication? Will you not repent? Do you want to continue in tribulation? You will hear of all kinds of sicknesses, which cannot be diagnosed nor cured. It is because of fornication. Those who commit fornication with her, he has killed their children with death. Have you not seen this manifesting today? You sympathize with a person who has lost five of his children. You attribute this to witchcraft and the enemy. It is fornication. An apostle came here and told me that he has lost all his children. I told him that he was the one who has killed his children because he was indulging in fornication. If there is any person who hears the word of God and rejoices in it, such a person will not fail to comply with the instructions of God and rejoice in them. This will solve his problems. You can now realize what has brought hardship and suffering into the world. Eating food which has been sacrificed to idols and fornication which you regard as a blessing. These are what have brought all your woes and sorrows. You can be going about for quite some time without any pain, but the moment you commit fornication, you start suffering from one form of sickness or another. You can remain for a long time without any sickness, but the moment you go to commit fornication, you will start having whooping cough. You cannot explain how it comes about, and so you will say that it is your enemy. It is the father who is at work. Sometimes after returning from fornication, you find yourself being covered with leprosy. This is a time when seven women will take hold of one man and tell him, We will eat our own food and wear our own clothes. Let us only be called by your name and take away our reproach. If you do not guide your footsteps, I will remain here until you go and come back. You can see the punishment that has come to the men. We are short of men. There are so many women and they are floating around like fish. When a woman goes to a university, she is looking for a husband. She comes out and meets a man and tells him that she has a car, food, and everything. Just move in with me. And the man will desert his wife at home and go after the university woman. That is death. The common complaint in the family today is that many women have lost their husbands to the desperate women who are not married. If you have five children, the husband will complain that your children are very noisy and he will go to some other place and stay with another woman. If they have only female children, he will find this a cause to complain. No matter whether you are lucky to give him only male children, he will find a cause to complain because his mind is already with another woman. Brotherhood has come to arrest the situation. If brotherhood did not arrive, where would you find any man? Whoever does not believe in the word of God, such a person has perished. The only thing that can save us is the word of God. Apart from the word of God, your mother will not stop you from marrying many women. Your father will not stop you. He will only tell you not to love another man's wife. And so, you are free to gather all other women unto yourself like King Solomon. Things were not like this when the British Parliament passed a law on monogamy, that every man should marry only one wife. Actually, this in itself is the commandment of God. The same law has also been passed in Ghana. 
In Nigeria, you are still in your old position. You claim that God is in Nigeria, but have the Nigerians complied with this gospel? If you go to school and you fail to take in all that the teacher teaches you, do you think you will pass the examination? If your school fees have been paid but you refuse to attend classes, do you think that you will pass the examination? In the same vein, if the Nigerians or the Africans or the entire world fail to practice this gospel, there is no salvation for them. This question of fornication is not common in Nigeria. When you go to the Western world, you will see prostitution in its true perspective. People stand by the side of the road and make love. The moment you come back from abroad, you have become a beast. You will not remember the meaning of shame again. You are very lucky that the Holy Spirit has come to reveal these truths to you. In the Western world, prostitutes have their own association and very soon they will establish branches in this country. You will sit in your house and receive a letter from them that you should be ready for their visit. If you do not heed this warning, do not call on me on that day. This is what is happening today. You will sit in your house and receive a letter from these members of the Association of Prostitutes, telling your wife not to worry herself because you did not belong to her alone. If you do not serve God, you have to serve Satan. You are also witnesses to the fact that today, women do stand by the road and grab men and lock them inside their rooms. That is a matter of life or death. This is a time to hearken to this call. The night is coming when you cannot do any work. Use this chance to keep the house clean for the Lord Jesus Christ to dwell in his house. Otherwise, you wait for the destruction that is coming upon the children of perdition. I know that God has revealed this gospel to the Ghanaians. That is why they have made a law to the effect that every man should marry only one wife and that there should be no divorce whatsoever. I hope that this gospel should also be accepted in Nigeria by each family. Let every man have only one wife and never divorce. All the sicknesses that beset you are the wrath of God. All the sickness that beset you, your lack and poverty, all come from fornication. There is no person on earth who refuses to refrain from fornication and sees the goodness of God. You witnessed the marriage blessing here the other day, just like it is said that I will rebuild the old ruins of David. The condition has been set forth that after sexual intimacy with your wife, You both have to fast and pray so that you may reaffirm your faith. Otherwise, you are covered with the darkness. It is either you stay by yourself without being associated with any man or woman, or you marry only one wife if you cannot abstain. Once you are married, you have no business with any other man or woman. You only meet with your wife for a very short time and after that, you have to fast. If you do not abide by this instruction, you are a rebel. You have the Blessed Brothers and Sisters Fellowship. The members are those who abide by all that have been lined out to you. When you go about from pillar to post, what do you call that? It is prostitution. Now the ruins of David have been rebuilt. This fellowship is for the selected ones. But who has hindered you from initiating into it? I do not say that a woman should not marry. Neither do I say that a man should not marry. What I am saying is that a man should marry only one wife, and a woman should have only one husband. Stop prostituting. Do not say that you want to remain alone, but go about fornicating with every man and woman. The verdict for that is perdition, diseases which has no name. All forms of affliction and woes arise from this act. Peace, joy, and all the good things of this kingdom which you desire hang on your forsaking fornication. When you forsake fornication, you will see the glory of God. I am standing in the high heavens declaring to all men and angels that those who want to inherit this kingdom must refrain from fornication and keep themselves pure for the King of Kings because He has come. I have called people individually and warned them that if they want to be saved, they should forsake fornication. Otherwise, no matter how high they aspire, it is in vain. You are not troubled by any witch or mermaid. Your problem is fornication. Whoever desires life and peace and goodness should separate himself from fornication so that God can enter into his house. I do not believe in mermaids. I do not believe in juju or medicine or in man. God has never given power to any of these things and they do not exist. I believe that if you fornicate, destruction will come to you. I thank the Holy Spirit for the fact that those who come to me and are told to refrain from these things, when you fail to heed my advice, you will see the finger of God. All those who refrain from fornication have very wonderful testimonies to give. 
When you spend money for the treatment of one sickness after another, you complain that it is high blood pressure, it is anemia, and you apply one drug after the other. Your body belongs to the Holy Spirit. Surrender it to him for his dwelling. Any woman who commits fornication has her own punishment. Any man who indulges in fornication receives his own punishment. And this punishment will extend to your children, your children's children, your business, your surrounding, and everything that affects you. That is why we are warned not to do this thing again. You did it when you did not believe. You did these things when the great teacher did not come. Someone has initiated into various secret societies, but his problems are on the increase. He has acquired doctorate degree and projects to the sun and moon, but his problems are insurmountable. The reason is that they do not know the name of this disease and its cause. Today, they are arguing that there is something in brotherhood. Yes, because if you refrain from fornication, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Death does not see you again. Sickness and poverty do not see you again. There is no occasion of stumbling for you anymore. That is what is in brotherhood. When you see a person beset with problems, he has not forsaken fornication. That is why he is met with problems. If you choose to lie within the altar, you are free to do so. If you like, I can surrender this chair to you and sit on the floor. As long as you are a fornicator, you will sit on the chair and continue to wail in pain. It is foolishness to believe that you acquire certain privileges when you are near the leader, when you are still fornicating and expect any good thing. If you are in India and you refrain from fornication, you are with the leader. If you are in Germany, Russia, and forsake fornication, you are the person who is near the leader. There is no other important thing in brotherhood other than for you to forsake fornication. I always consult my oracle with a live tortoise, not a dead one. What has brought wretchedness to the human race is fornication. What has hindered you from enjoying the blessing of this kingdom is fornication. School children in their schools know nothing other than girlfriend and boyfriend. I do not know what you mean by these. They do not even regard it as sin. And this is what has visited the entire world with the death, sickness, afflictions, poverty, and woes. Just as it is said that whoever destroys the temple of God him will God destroy. Just as we have been warned not to commit fornication as they of old did and died in one day, 23,000. It is also to confirm the saying that, I will kill her children with death and cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Let us hear and abide by the instructions of God for our own good. God himself does not derive any benefit from this. It is for you you will see his glory. Angels will minister unto you. You will have wealth and everything. Whoever says that he has come to brotherhood and has not got money should know that he is the cause of his poverty. I've told you that the gospel is like a chain. Yesterday we had a different one. Tomorrow we will have another. Every day we have one. All of them are with power to accomplish everything. The Gospel on Idolatry and the gospel of today are the key to all the evils that befall man. They offend God above every other thing, most especially when they defile his temple. It is the worst sin, and such a son is not fit to live. Since he is a loving father, he warns us with sickness, poverty, and lack. You can see the position of the entire world. That is why when you come here, you are told to confess your sins. If you confess your sins and forsake fornication, it is over. It is said you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Many of us do not know that when you commit fornication something has to happen. Surprising things will happen. If you search yourself... You will realize that it is because of sin, and you would repent and God would forgive you. Since you are Thomases, go and prove it today. Commit fornication and something terrible will happen to you, which will greatly surprise you. It would not fail to happen. A brother confessed that after the father has preached that we should not commit fornication. He went and committed fornication and suffered from hypertension immediately. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that it was because of the fornication he has committed. And today, no matter how beautiful a woman is, he does not attempt it again. You want to see a dead man before you shed tears. 
Obedience is better than sacrifice. As you have heard it now, if you are a man or a woman and you refrain from fornication, you are free. Your way is open and everything goes orderly for you. But if you are stiff-necked and you continue in fornication, you will soon look for death and you will find it. He will shake you in different ways. He will scatter everything you put your hands to do. That is the warning. If you repent, since he is a merciful God, he will draw you unto himself. He has his own ways of dealing with us. He surely has. Brethren, it is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. I do not want to take you further. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, delivered by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu. Compiled by George Morales. You're the lamb that was slain on the cross for man. You're the one that was worthy to open the seal. You came to save mankind.
Oh, oh. 